We continue with the manual for teachers. Number 19. What is justice? Justice is the divine correction for injustice. Injustice is the basis for all the judgments of the world. Justice corrects the interpretations to which injustice gives rise and cancels them out. Neither justice nor injustice exist in heaven, for error is impossible and correction meaningless. In this world, however, forgiveness depends on justice, since all attack can only be unjust. Justice is the Holy Spirit's verdict upon the world. Except in his judgment, justice is impossible, for no one in the world is capable of making only just interpretations and laying all injustices aside. If God's Son were fairly judged, there would be no need for salvation. The thought of separation would have been forever inconceivable. Justice, like its opposite, is an interpretation. It is, however, the one interpretation that leads to truth. This becomes possible because, while it is not true in itself, justice includes nothing that opposes truth. There is no inherent conflict between justice and truth. One is but the first small step in the direction of the other. The path becomes quite different as one goes along. Nor could all the magnificence, the grandeur of the scene, and the enormous opening vistas that rise to meet one as the journey continues be foretold from the outset. Yet even these, whose splendor reaches indescribable heights as one proceeds, fall short indeed of all that wait when the pathway ceases and time ends with it. But somewhere one must start. Justice is the beginning. All concepts of your brothers and yourself, all fears of future states and all concerns about the past stem from injustice. Here is the lens which held before the body's eyes distorts perception and brings witness of the distorted world back to the mind that made the lens and holds it very dear. Selectively and arbitrarily is every concept of the world built up in just this way. Quote, sins are perceived and justified by careful selectivity in which all thought of wholeness must be lost. Forgiveness has no place in such a scheme, for not one, quote, sin, but seems forever true. Salvation is God's justice. It restores to your awareness the wholeness of the fragments you perceive as broken off and separate. And it is this that overcomes the fear of death. For separate fragments must decay and die, but wholeness is immortal. It remains forever and forever like its creator, being one with him. God's judgment is his judgment, justice. On to this, a judgment wholly lacking in condemnation, an evaluation based entirely on love, you have projected your injustice giving God the lens of warped perception through which you look. Now it belongs to him and not to you. You are afraid of him and do not see. You hate and fear yourself as enemy. Pray for God's justice and do not confuse his mercy with your own insanity. Perception can make whatever picture the mind desires to see. Remember this. In this lies either heaven or hell, as you elect. God's justice points to heaven just because it is entirely impartial. 
it accepts all evidence that is brought before it, omitting nothing and assessing nothing as separate and apart from all the rest. From this one standpoint does it judge, and this alone. Here all attack and condemnation becomes meaningless and indefensible. Perception rests, the mind is still, and light returns again. Vision is now restored. What had been lost has now been found. The peace of God descends on all the world and we can see. And we can see. What is the peace of God? It has been said that there is a kind of peace that is not of this world. How is it recognized? How is it found? And being found, how can it be retained? Let us consider each of these questions separately, for each reflects a different step along the way. First, how can the peace of God be recognized? God's peace is recognized at first by just one thing. In every way, it is totally unlike all previous experiences. It calls to mind nothing that went before. It brings with it no past associations. It is a new thing entirely. There is a contrast, yes, between this thing and all the past, but strangely, it is not a contrast of true differences. The past just slips away, and in its place is everlasting quiet. Only that. The contrast first perceived has merely gone. Quiet has reached to cover everything. How is this quiet found? No one can fail to find it who but seeks out its conditions. God's peace can never come where anger is, for anger must deny that peace exists. Who sees anger as justified in any way or any circumstance proclaims that peace is meaningless and must believe that it cannot exist. In this condition, peace cannot be found. Therefore, forgiveness is the necessary condition for finding the peace of God. More than this, given forgiveness, there must be peace. For what except attack will lead to war? And what but peace is opposite to war? Here, the initial contrast stands out clear and apparent. Yet, when peace is found, the war is meaningless. And it is conflict now that is perceived as non-existent and unreal. How is the peace of God retained once it is found? Returning anger in whatever form will drop the heavy curtain once again and the belief that peace cannot exist will certainly return. War is again accepted as the one reality. Now must you once again lay down your sword, although you do not recognize that you have picked it up again. But you will learn, as you remember, even faintly now, what happiness was yours without it, that you must have taken it again as your defense. Stop for a moment now and think of this. Is conflict what you want, or is God's peace the better choice? Which gives you more? A tranquil mind is not a little gift. Would you not rather live than choose to die? Living is joy, but death can only weep. You see in death escape from what you made. But this you do not see, that you made death, and it is but illusion of an end. 
Death cannot be escape, because it is not life in which the problem lies. Life has no opposite, for it is God. Life and death seem to be opposites because you have decided death ends life. Forgive the world, then you will understand that everything that God created cannot have an end, and nothing he did not create is real. In this one sentence is our course explained. In this one sentence is our practicing given its one direction. And in this one sentence is the Holy Spirit's whole curriculum specified exactly as it is. What is the peace of God? No more than this. The simple understanding that His will is wholly without opposite. There is no thought that contradicts His will, yet can be true. The contrast between His will and yours but seem to be reality. In truth there was no conflict, for His will is yours. Now is the mighty will of God Himself His gift to you. He does not seek to keep it for Himself. Why would you seek to keep your tiny, frail imaginings apart from Him? The will of God is one, and all there is. This is your heritage. The universe beyond the sun and stars, and all the thoughts of which you can conceive, belong to you. God's peace is the condition for His will. Attain His peace, and you remember Him.